I'm also I've never played with finger picks too, so I mean I don't even know like is there okay, I see I see that y'all yours are like really You got a fun pick? You I do. One? Okay. No, I got one, but I mean I've I'll never get rid of that one. Let me give you one. Okay. <laughs> Plastic's better? Yeah. Unicorn horn. And you know, I mean, yeah, you know, I, I bought, I got one of these bars, this shape. Yeah, but you, you need to get a round bar. Okay, that's, you know, I mean, it's just, this is what they have in town. Yeah, that's okay. Try that pick, fun pick, and see how it fits for me. There you go. Okay, ergonomically, first thing we gotta figure out, you'll definitely get, we're gonna have to get a round bar for yourself. Okay. So, all right, round that's bar. the first thing. You can buy, buy one for like, you know, 20 bucks at Dunlop. We'll be fine. You need know, to spend 100 bucks. I don't know. I mean, this was like 20 bucks too. So. Ergonomically, one of the things, first thing you want to think about when you do this is the way you're setting up, setting up at this, the guitar. Mm -hmm. You Most people, the first thing they're going to do is set up the guitar and they're going to do this. Mm -hmm. And my friend calls it the chicken leg. It's way out here like this, chicken yep. wing. You don't want to do that. You want it to sit. So I sit slightly so that... The 12th fret is like right here in front of this hand. And keep this arm in. Keep And the function of this is to keep your hand, there's several different ways to play. You can play with your fingers straight out like Buddy Evans did. Paul Franklin had the fingers turned in. But the whole thing is you want to have almost like a ping pong ball in here where you can insert and you don't want to play flat handed. And this is the first thing everybody wants to do is play flat handed. Okay. You put your hand down, you already see it. You already your already natural tendency to do that, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So what you want to do is put your hand flat on it, turn it up like this. There you go. There you now go. your hand is, it's kind of, it feels awkward, doesn't it? But you want to have your hand laying down like this. So I'm, I know it feels very strange. Another thing, I'll, I'll straighten another thing up. See how your thumb's like this? Uh -huh. You do not want that knuckle like that. You want this turn like this because suddenly you're gripping and you have your, your thumb turn like this. So you want to function here instead of here. Okay. Because if you're using that right here, it's very inefficient, bending at that thumb. You want to- Oh, so it's just classical guitar technique? Exactly, no. it's, yeah. a, it's right hand, exactly. You know, you don't want to do this. Orange wanna, position. Is, what, is that what it's called? I call it with the kids, just the orange, yeah. like you're holding an orange. Yeah, yeah, I say ping pong ball. And then you, you move from you a, have a big, bigger hand than me. big knuckle. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and me coming in as a bassist and a finger player. Yeah, too, so this see is... how you want want to do this? Try to bring your in, hand, hand in like this, your arm, this elbow in like that. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Now lay those fingers down like that. Perfect. There you go. Now just now we're going to get rid of a group. Of I know it feels okay. awkward. Uh, yeah. And as, uh, basically, as you get more efficient, keep those fingers underneath there for right now. As you get more efficient, you'll get this knuckle in like this. There it is. And put that hand down like that. Are you now, actually resting on the strings? I am because okay. this is part of the technique. It's blocking technique. Because if you if you play like garbage, that's the first that's the first thing that happens. Everybody sounds like you're playing with Cheryl Crow. <laughs> Everything's ringing together. Yeah. Okay. You cannot. You have to get what's called blocking, where you can cut off the note and lay it set done is with back, with the back of the palm. Some people do it with their palm picks. muting. Palm muting, exactly. It's the same idea as like playing rock guitar almost. But after you play a note, you cut it off with the back of your hand. Now this technique is the hardest technique of the steel guitar. So if you're playing it's so subtle, but I've been doing it for 40 years, so Default is almost like the palm meeting, and then when you go to pick, you raise it to right, let exactly the note right. escape. So one of the first thing you want to do, and this is why it's so awkward here, you want to get this hand under there because you want to be able to use that palm to be able to do this. And that's why a lot of people start blocking it first. Some people will block like this. I know, there, see that's more comfortable, but you see this knuckle? That's the trick, is keeping that hand like that. Now everybody develops their own style, so I'm not mm -hmm. saying no, it's well, yeah. necessarily right or wrong. It just, like I said, Buddy Emmons for years played like this, with this finger out like this, and blocked with these hands. I have a tendency, Paul Franklin, certain people have their these fingers underneath. Now, 
Okay, that being said, you, you gotta be real careful of that knuckle right there. It's like Alan said, classical technique. You wanna try to work from that joint, not that giant joint. And see, see how my thumb is like that and not like this? Look at the difference. And it takes getting used to. Yeah. Because you're doing this like that. And you can see how weird my thumb is from doing it all these years. I mean, I can. I can. Yeah, <laughs> well, you have it. That's the whole idea. Yeah, I can see that. There's a stranger than mine. <laughs> so that's the whole idea. Now, the next thing we have to do is find a gr some groups of strings. So now we're, we're concentrating on this right hand on how to basically get some blocking, get some techniques where your, where your strings are, your fingers are getting the strings somewhat solid. Next thing we're going to do is think about your triads. You know, so we're going to pick three triads. Four, actually. The first one, the first E, pedals up, is going to be on the tenth string, the eighth string, and the sixth string. So basically you're going to play a string, skip, and this is the way I memorized it years ago, Play a string, skip a string, play a string, skip a string. So the first triad you're going to play will be 10, 8, and 6. 10, 8, and 6. Now this is going to be the tricky part. Now watch and see how my hand is. See how we're all relaxed. Even if, even if you don't put your hand down like this, even just to get a feel for it like this, I'm playing all. Oh. Just play that, that group of strings, and that open right there will be your E chord. That's it. There he is. So your first E. That's it. Just, I find really hard to yeah, keep it, this it's, right. It's, it's, it's tr tricky, but just try at least get yourself the first group of strings. That's it. There you go. Good. There it is. And let me see how your picks are bent. Bent them. Yeah. Yeah, bent them so that, that's what I was asking. Okay. Yeah, that's so okay. they're not too straight. That way you're trying to do this. That so the pick is kind of curved. You got to like. Yeah. Wrap around my fingers right, right on the tips. Yeah, and wrapped much. around a little bit. Also. Okay. So does, does is part of your finger touch the string and then hit the pick, or is it just yeah, right all, on the pick? It's all, all it's all pick. Okay. Yeah, now that they've been around a little bit, we'll get, we'll get a little fat, better feel. There's your first. That's it. That's it. That's the most awkward one. The next one will be you have another group of strings, which will be eight, five, and six. There you go, eight, skip one, and then play five and six. There's your other E. group now this will be very fundamentally pretty easy it's going to be six uh, let me see if, let's see. Oh, so weird I've been doing it 40 one, years two, I have to one, count two, three. <laughs> oh, yeah. one, two, three, uh, you're six. gonna do uh, there we go <laughs> Five, six, and seven. They're all three together, right there, so right in the oh, middle. Oh, yeah, okay. Strong strings? You're good. And the last one will be two, I mean three, four, and five. So these two are all grouped together right there. And that basically is a four, five, three, four, five. Yeah, three, four, five, and six. All those is just basically an E chord. So Which ones aren't the E chord? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
that's a, that's a better way to look at it. Your, your, your second string is not part of it. Okay. Your ninth string will not be a part of it. And uh, nine. And your seventh will not be a part of it. Basically, your D and your F sharp. F sharp is the ninth. So. Are they to do with like five chords? Well, Dominant chords? Or, or nine. Nine. Yeah, because you think you E, the F sharp. Oh, yeah. So. So there's your F sharp on the top. So you can also get, you know, using that, you can get a seventh. And that is also using that F sharp. So, but the idea is your okay. first group of strings, and what you want to do is just work and just remember it's every other one with the first one. There it is. It's almost like I'm, I'm really trying not to do the elbow out. Yeah, that's what, that's I know you want to do, do that, so but much. See, take a look at where my look at ergonomics and where I am. You just want to do nothing and then make your to thumb go this, back. To do this, it's like you'll never get your technique correct. You bring it in here. There you go. And one of the one of the things is, and some people will play this way, but it's not really accepted completely. Is flat-handed because then you're not then you're trying to do this instead of doing this. You can't get anything like that. You can see, and that's the whole thing is, hold up your hand, shake it out, and just hold it like that. Like hold ping pong. Exactly, and see how, see how my fingers are here? And then I just turn it down like this. So it's kind of a, you can see, and when you relax like that, you're fine. And see, now you're getting better, but you just remember, turn that like that. Now, there you go. Now I you mean, it, it makes the, now you can see that yeah. how that changes because like this you're like you're gripping a baseball like this you're and that's what's so important to have that there see now that's already better for you you don't want to use that knuckle yeah your thumb's like your biggest should always finger. just stay locked that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's that that's 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 always watch be. Line. playing from here, not here all the time. So that's what, if I was doing this, well I can't even yeah, make myself. Yeah, you can. Now you can see how. That's why it's so important to keep that at that angle like that. There you go. And that's something at home you can just stress finding those. But those first chord groups are the most important to get those things. The, 10 8 6. Those triads. Yep, there you go. 10 8 6. 6. Uh, actually, let's see. I'm sorry, it's 8. Then you eight, have eight six five. Eight six five. That works for you. Five six seven. Eight. Five, five six. These three. Now what you get? What you get in there? Three five six seven. It's actually be eight, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, five. Eight six five. Yep. Ah, you'll hear it. And the next group will be. Right in the middle of three, three, four, five, and six. All of those will work. Any group of those will be open. Be open try it. So the aim is what's going to be tricky for you at first. Yeah. Getting the aim. But as long as you know that's where that is, you're good to go. Now let's figure out what happens when you put the bar down, uh, put the pedals down. Okay. When you take that same group of strings. So you have three, you have the triads of E. When you push your pedals down, mm -hmm. A and B pedal. So that you're playing a four chord. So you're playing an A. No. Make sure you get both of them down solid. And try to play that same group. There you go. That's it. Excellent. Now use that 
that come up to that same other group group we talked about, like I would say the second group. There it is, third group. Remember those three are together? So they're all together. So this becomes a big four chord? It's a four chord, yeah. Oh, okay. Baby Bella is a four chord. And then, then the last three, which is three, four, and five. So basically open, you have a one, three, four, five. Yes. And then pedals A and B down, you have four. There you go. Lift it up, and you have an E chord. Push it down, you have a four chord, A. There's your first dynamics of steel. <laughs> 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 got three brands come on <laughs> so okay the third fret on your lowest E I put if you play a four string bass uh -huh. your lowest string about the third fret to G it's the same thing here that's only that's why I can maybe relate it for you this string this is well oh well okay. we'll think about the triads yeah you put your bar over top of third oh, fret got, yeah, you got got G's. You. now the tricky part is there's no this is the hardest part you cannot be in between. You have to be mm -hmm. on, on the, the money, wire, mm -hmm. on the money, because mm -hmm. there's no frets on this thing. So it's not like a guitar where you can be somewhere oh, in this, this ambiguous area and it still works. You have to be right on. Now the trick is, is the line of sight. It it is tricky because it when you play mm -hmm. right, as you're here, I'm only seeing directly right here. But even though right here I'm completely, com perfectly over top of the fret, of course. Without being playing with a band or anything, there's no reference, but that's pretty much the G. But when I move here, the line of sight doesn't look like I'm exactly over top of the string. So it, that takes getting looped. There you go. That's exactly right. And that's one of the reasons why you want to vet, get to the round bar, because that way you can use the vibrato to get yourself to. If you, just, if you just play this, that's no you know, I'm, uh, well, I'm pretty, that's pretty in tune, but that gives you some leeway. There you go. The same group of strings. Now remember, this is what the pedal's up. So you're at the third fret. All mm -hmm. three of those triads are G's. Okay. Okay. Just like a guitar or the bass, you're at the third fret, those are G's. If you push down your A and B pedal at that same fret, C. you're going from to the four chord. To C. Alan's already up, up ahead of you. <laughs> he understands. I'm sorry, I'm going to shut up. <laughs> there it is. There's your four chord. Now, you'll eventually get it in tune, but you got to get a round bar. It'll help you Yeah, Yeah, I can already okay? tell the round bar. Yeah, you can see. It. Look at the difference. Like, so, like I'm fighting to keep this thing up. It's right. so um, futuristic. And, and once, you, once you get your, once you get the technique. So, so, so show me how that vibrato works. Are you rolling it just back and forth? Like, yes. Yeah, yes. He's, he's rolling, yeah. Let's see what happens. So, to venture into one, four, five, open, pedals down, four, moving up two frets, five. So right here you have play a whole song right there. <laughs> That's all it is. Like guitar, you put your finger on the 
little vibrato and playing guitar will give you a little extra sustain on the guitar. Same thing happens here. If you just play that, listen to the difference. You can get some stain out of the note. pushing a little bit, a little but bit. it's almost like people, a not, just letting it rest is not of, enough. A lot of people talk about this. Uh, the bar is so heavy, My bar, this bar is, you can see, much heavier okay. than yours. Yeah. So it, the, just the natural gravity of it will carry a lot of, will get you get it. I mean, that was, that was something I noticed when I was looking at bars, now, different weights. Some people, them. some people believe, uh, and this is what somebody told, told me, that Buddy Emmons, who's the king of this, actually pushed down slightly. <laughs> get a little better tune. So, so you can let it rest and it'll be fine, but even a teeny bit, I mean, I'm letting the bar use the weight, but sometimes I will give it a little extra. I mean, what I mean, it's so subtle, just Like your arm weight, though, kind of ergonomically, is it like just like your body and your arm? Uh, just pushing it? down. I mean, you really shouldn't do it, but you can get away with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, sometimes you know, that's no way. That's just the way of the bar. But sometimes I'll go just a teeny bit, give me a little bit of more sustain, and it's so subtle. If you go too far, you're gonna yeah, go out too. Yeah, yeah. You just have. The knee levers are different than my other guitars. That's why I'm having to think extra because my E's are oh. on the wrong side. So <laughs> okay. I was thinking I'm going. I'm keep on my muscle muscle memory is going to. I'm playing stuff when it comes when it comes to volume pedals. So you don't necessarily you don't keep it. You no. kind of keep it kind of. Yeah. Uh, kind of ideally, you have the amp loud enough where when you have a little bit when it's off, you don't want to go all the way to the floor. You want to have something some travel in it. So if it's right there. Yeah. You get sustained if that's if you're you at full room, volume. Room to wiggle. You have no room yeah. to give yourself su uh, sustain. So you want to be somewhere halfway in between there, where you can at least get yourself. You're not full blast, and you can't give yourself some. You yeah. See, how I'm making it sustained by teeny, slightly using the volume pedal as the decay of the note, and you get some sustain out of the note. That technique it takes a while well, trust me, yeah, because just <laughs> <laughs> the only the other thing I can say and we're going to start with the, the fir, per, first position G those triads at three you have the G C moving up to five or the D mm -hmm. and then with just the A pedal Alan what's up just the A pedal E minor oh it's a, it, that's the one that does the five up the six? Actually, it's just going one to a. Yeah. So the C sharp. No. Oh, it's F sharp. E minor. Oh, okay. And G, we're in G, so we're. Oh, I see. Got a six minor. So the D's going up to E. Yeah. Yeah. We got one six minor. One, one six four and five all in that one spot. The D lever's the other one. It gives you that. Uh, Do it again. Three chord. Yep. So you can 
Lucia, how many chords can you get to without In moving? one position. Strings, you have seven to the Lord seventh. Well, F. Right. Yeah, so, so like in one position you have one, two, three, four, five, six. You have all those chords all, all, in, that, all in that one position. Now, ideally, you want to be able to weave yourself in between each one of these. So let's get let's go what what you want. There you go. Once you get your bar and do that, you'll be one. Well, there you go. You gotta be real precise with your uh, uh, your pedals. Yeah. Really. your seventh string when you do that or your sixth string done there because one two three four or your fifth string because because that low that low then is is not going to carry the minor the minor chord is yeah. Yeah. see listen to this you go it is a minor chord but doesn't sound as rich as lowering the third on that top string He was doing it. Oh, uh, it was e, a four chord. He was doing E to A. Awesome. That's E to A, which is the one or the both? Uh, both would be the four chord. Yeah. What was it if you want to do the minor chord? You just do the first pedal, the A pedal. Just the A. Correct. Which is, are there a lot of? Uh, John was saying. Uh, I was saying maybe there's a lot of lap steel players use uh, bare feet, and he was saying, "What's well, you wear those pointy cowboy boots <laughs> well, <not laughs> for the precise?" <laughs> I tell you, it's the pointy is not going to help me. That's out. true. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. Uh, the shoes you wear makes a big difference because for me, where, where I bend my ankles, I can see. Oh can't, yeah, I can't play in, uh, any kind of shoe that. You gotta use on ones. Like, see, I'm, I'm using more of my ankle. Like a lot of people will go. You know, Realistically, see, I have the B pedal down, which is your sus chord. We talked about that, yeah. and then pushing it into. So to get this, oh, that's nice. squeezing it. It's all coming from his feet. Yeah. yeah. So you want to get some like basketball shoes, maybe like. Ankle support. Anything, well, anything. Skate, anything. Skateboard and shoes. Skateboard shoes were great. <laughs> I'm not shoes. kidding. Skateboard no, but you shoes might break now. your ankles. So you have to really, you know. I'm not going to fall. <laughs> Now this is where it takes your ankle. So you're gonna have a tough time with your boots. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, use right, the well, B pedal. What which uh which strings? Again? Any uh yeah, probably yeah. I'm thinking seven, uh I mean eight, seven, five. Seven, five. Yeah. Any of those groups that are right in the middle. I would concentrate on the middle group when you're starting out. Three, three, four, and five, five, four, and six. Those are easy. Those are the three. The, the, the fellow I bought it from. Those are the three strings. Like just these three and these three. Right, because that right there, you're just playing. They're all together. It's almost like strumming a guitar. Except you're using your fingers together. Now, bend your B. Oh, push what? your P pedal down and then bend into your A. 
been by doing by exactly. B, that's B the, into A. That's oh, okay, the motion okay, you want. Okay, that's okay. it. There you go. <laughs> that's it. That's exactly it. That's 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 the sound right. you were looking for right there. Yeah. I know. You, there it is. That's your first kind of. It's your first lick. <laughs> Do you th use that four chord as your one chord? So then, when you let off, it becomes a five chord. Do you know uh, what I mean? Not really. No. Uh, if it was it... now, now that you being said, I mean? uh, you're thinking about positions. Now, yeah, if you want to play in, let's say, the key of C, yeah. you can start there as your one chord. Now, this is I'm using right. these open positions right. just as a reference. But the truth is, you can. There's a G you, you chord. You can actually change position. You can go just like you're like this at your tenth right. fret on guitar. Yeah. That's a G. Like a five. Now if you put, if you yeah. put your A and B pedal down on the tenth fret, that's a G also. Yeah. Right. So, you got your next G area. So there's your next G pocket of yeah. notes. Now that being said, if you're playing in C, you, there's your A and B pedal down. C. If you go to this fret, open pedals up, you have another C. So you have groups of C. You have C here, just like guitar. So right here is, there's a C, there's a C. This is one he can't do because he doesn't have a knee lever for it. There's there a is C. a lever here. That's a lower level. Yeah, okay. So right here, So realistically, you can go. So what I just did is what from a one. Good. I'll tune. Down to a four. Dropping the four to the other position where there's a four with the pedals down. Move it up two frets to a five. And move it up to the other position there's a five. I'll tune. But to play it in tune with, I'm not talking a beat. Uh, position where there's uh -huh. C, I have uh, in this case I was playing G, but there's G noise there, G noise there, C noise there, C noise here, here's a 5, D, so then the, the whole deal with the steel guitar is how 
I got so much reflection here. It's like the cage how theory to for steel. Some way, yeah, exactly. How to put these together. So I just went from a one to a one. Down to a four. Now I can go up or down to a five. It's like you're hitting that from a flat seven, like a mixolydian well, thing. I'm like, going to actually, I'm going down to a uh, a full seventh or ninth chord. In other words, I'm on G. Yeah. G7, right. G9. Then I'll release that pedal to a G7 and to a C. So I have one, nine, seven, four. So that just gives you a transition. There's a lot of you know things you can do after you get to playing single notes where you can play it. Where you're not just playing portal, you're actually playing uh playing notes that are work. Yeah, like instead leading just, notes. Yeah. Instead of just playing all you know, so that way you can get some melody. It's very interesting. It just seems to be the, the, the functional theory of it musically seems to be makes sense based to on now. like transitioning into fours more than like five of fives like in classical music was like the secondary dominance. But you know it's real square western music. That's what I mean. One, four, so it's so it's minor. But it's very, it's also kind of mixolydian a lot of it. It's oh, just yeah, kind absolutely. of, do you know what I mean? Absolutely. It's not, it's a lot of flat sevenths. Absolutely. So you know, if you go to an F chord, it's hard to, yeah. You know, like, it's, it's hard to get kind of what you so get. So they're like the four of fours as opposed to five of fives. Like, so if you're in G and you want to get to C, it's like if you go down to that F chord, down to G, it's like, it's almost like the four of the C. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. And then it's so almost... It's, then you're, but it's based on the kind of the actual physicality of the instrument. Exactly, exactly. Which fits country and blues. But that's a, basically, chordally, that's kind of a... When, when the first thing you start out with, where you can get the chords. Later, you know, you have to get into... Where all your all your single all your single notes are. Man, sorry. I'll use this guitar. Uh, like individual licks and single note do you think of it i try and teach kids this with like lead guitar mm -hmm. it, it's almost more like little chord islands and then how do you link them to the next chord steel, island steel is as opposed to like scales because you know? of the way this steel is the triadic tuning is you're thinking like this is a capo yeah and all, if you learn five licks yeah just the little hammer on 12 different places right and like if you go how are you in G? G yeah. Term. So that one lick. That one lick. So if you're playing, doesn't matter what key you're in. If somebody says we're in C, I go, okay. <laughs> you're in the band. G, okay. yeah. Playing the same, you can play the same licks. It's yeah. easy. It's, 
actually it's easy to play in different. But you keys. think of it more of like decorating a chord exactly. in your own mind, exactly. as opposed you don't, to you're, you're not thinking. You're not thinking single notes really. You you're thinking you harmony. It's a little tricky to think yeah. scales. You yeah. have to rethink, and that's why my personal playing is I'm playing more. <laughs> Just that one little bit in licks between. that I, you know, know works against these certain chords. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, like one of my go-to, I have certain licks that I use all the time, especially in like honky-tonk music where honky-tonk, like Buck Owen stuff, which is more of a... I'm not really thinking anything but exactly what it is. It's a, it's, it's yeah. flavoring something. It's a here I'm yeah. on a. Let's say that's the one chord. Yeah, you know, that is. I'm playing against the. In this case, I'm, let's say the D's the one. That's. I'm just doing that yeah, lick that I know that works against kind of the right. Now you don't want to keep doing the same lick against against off one four five, you know. So you have yeah. you don't want to play the same lick all the time, but you have pockets of things. So and just like guitarists or anything else, there's certain safety <laughs> nets that yeah. if you're playing something that's really fast, there's certain licks that. that you get like muscle memory licks of anything you playing any instrument. Uh, you know, of course I'm kind of teaching country steel and there's so many different things you can do where you know the steel I usually play this is what I brought because it's lightweight but uh, on my other guitar I have different setup and it's a little easier to play some of those other lines this, I'm struggling a little bit with the action of this guitar <laughs> string uh, I mean eighth string I'm sorry there it is yeah that basically is your lowering to get a, uh, a minor, another minor chord and that should be both your eighth strings which would be which are uh, Guitar, it's this. On my guitar, it's this way. Come in. And then my other guitar, it's this way. My knee, knee levers are set up differently on every guitar. Most there's a standard. If you just grab those two, well, I'll tune. We'll tune it up. But I wouldn't worry about that knee lever for right now. Yeah, I got enough right now. Yeah, you have enough. You got, all, <laughs> you got a lot of pedals. Wait till you have five knee levers. And, yeah. Just to show you what I'm talking about, just slow. Simple as that. Just play that, play that triad for you. Put the pedals down. Okay, so when you go up to the four chord with the pedals, yep. then you're thinking the five chords just two to the two right. Up, yep. 
Yeah. Exactly. Like just like guitar. Okay. Yeah, and once you get your boots. Yeah. When you're, once you're playing barefoot, you're gonna go. Oh, it's a lot easier. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no, I'm serious. It's a world of difference. There you go. from here and come into here so mm -hmm. I'm really relaxed and I'm sitting kind of you know some people will sit right in front of their right in the middle my personal preference and my, a lot of players from the 70s Buddy Charlton Buddy Emmons yeah, well, these guys they tend to play more should all fit in there. If that knee lever needs to fold it up, don't worry about it. You see. <laughs> it's right there, but I'm not gonna use it, so. Yeah. Now, see, now, now you're not kind of like way over here. There you go. Sweet yeah. boots. Oh, cool. oh Miss. Miss Chappelle. There he is. Dan. Now lift them both up. There it is. You actually have a little bit of a lick going. Try it again. <laughs> there it is. That's the word. Do this. This is your next practice. Now there's a chord in between here, but you don't have a knee lever to get it. So you can go. So I started with pedals up. up. And went from three to ten with the pedals down. So Going I went from, from a G. A. Actually, I went from G to another G. That's the tricky part. Then start there. Mm -hmm. Put your finger, fingers over, feet over the pedals. Over, just over, yeah. not down. Don't push them down. Hit that note, slide all the way to ten, and push down your pedals. What? Oh, it's same. Oh, yeah. Okay. And you got to kind of. There's kind of a. It's kind of a technique you'll eventually get. There it is. Okay, it's right. It's right here. Yeah, right there. Sorry. And be sure your aim pedals. It's easier to go backwards. Go. Actually, I think at 11. 10 will be right here. Right kind of here. That's tw that'll be. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm upside down. 12. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's my fault. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Kind of cool. Or I go. You know, 
It's one of those things as you... There you go. As the more you play, there's little subtle things that you do. But you don't really realize. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the, that's the whole thing started with the fad of like Hawaiian music and then somehow electrifying it. And well, it was a, like the fly, was a, frying pan guitar, is that what it is? Basically, called? it was all just plain open, open yeah. tuning. And eventually, I think it was Shot Jackson or one of these guys, I can't remember exactly what it was, put the first well, first pedal on there to change things. So that was a, the country and, thing to the pedals? Way, and that's the way it kind of morphed into yeah. a country thing. And I think it was Pete Drake. I think it was Pete Drake that did the first song. I'm trying to think what it is. That he used pedals and everybody said, what is he doing? Yeah, yeah. it's impossible. And then, then everybody, <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And then everybody... Was he a car person or is he like a mechanic or something? Oh, that's or? a good question. I think it was Pete Drake who was the first one to really come up with putting pedal to get that instead of going... He also invented the top box too. Serious? Like one of these through a top box. Uh, wow. yeah, yeah. Uh, Red Road. I think it was Red Road. So, yeah. Or no, that was the E-Bender. Uh, and did they start adding strings or was Pete it Drake always... Did the top box. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah just, was it like a six string th open and then they started adding uh, strings? I think it was regular... regular uh, I think it was... Most of them were six. Then they start adding the top string, the F sharp to get, yeah. you know, the nine. So they added, started adding strings yeah. to get these bigger, bigger. Kind of western swing type sound where it's a little yeah, extended. You get, you get bigger, harmony. bigger chords. So you're rolling. Yeah. And then, then your technique will come in on what you want to play. For yeah. me, I, I use, I approach it differently. You know, Paul Franklin was the guy that said, try to learn a bunch of licks with your pedals down and nothing else. Learn the mm. fingerboard. I tend to sometimes, with some of my lead playing, try to emulate, especially with the bands I play with, but what Derek Trucks is playing. So in other words, I'm doing. Yeah. You know, he does, he's getting. Oh, it's real vocal sounding. Yeah. You know, things like that. Now somebody might, you get this note here. If you go, that's all in one pocket, but you can also go, that same clean. note's there. Yeah. So some players might go, for me, it's better than, I like, I like that position better for me. Yeah. Just, And same note as here, but to this, just sounds better. It's yeah. just a matter of style. Some people play that way. Some people don't. Whenever you play uh, bluesy stuff, Jim, like you know how I, with the say you're in a kind of a pentatonic mindset. And you know when you slightly majorize bands on the guitar, like the third and the seventh, and the, you know what I mean? Do you do that 
with the slide at all? You can, uh, you know, like, everybody's different. I just tend to, or do you like, keep it listening more... to guitar players for me, you know, I've listened to playing, like, you know, you think about how many people play in the key of E, yeah. playing blues. Or, That's what I'm asking, I guess, is... Or, of like of like then like instead of just da 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 do you kind of ever kind for of me you know slightly you know everybody's different yeah. you know I, it depends on what band you're playing with what night yeah you know? right I, yeah i really for me if i'm playing with a guitar player yeah. play certain styles i try i'll kind tend, of it'll influence me for the night right, you're chameleon uh, if i play somebody that plays everything is like <laughs> surprised how many bands for me I'm playing steel guitar and I don't necessarily we're not necessarily playing all country all night yeah you can't you know, yeah. Come, yeah, doing country but then you're doing um, yeah there's something. a whole swat there's a whole van like of have to. blues kind of in there Say even like a guitar player is doing a solo. Like, how, how would you think of like comping or, or like kind of two different things? A lot of do you just play lower guys strings? Just playing. I personally do. I because of, of playing in bands that are smaller, small don't have keyboard players and fiddle the... players. There's just two of us. I will actually vamp chords. Okay. And that's if we're doing a, a something that's a four four shuffle where I'm going. He's become a guitar player. Right, I try to tend to follow the drummer. Exactly. You know. So you're hitting that upbeat to kind of show. Yeah, doing a backbeat thing. So I'll, I'll just. Some people might just go. Yeah. More of a pad. Right, yeah. just padding. For me, I tend to actually push yeah. with a drummer. That's just something I do quite a bit, Laura. I'm going. Yeah. Is that just for being in the moment of those things and feeling like it needs that in a more uh, ensemble? I think it has a lot to do with me playing a playing guitar playing guitar because yeah. most steel players that don't play guitar don't think that's rhythm. interesting yeah none they, ah. because everything's like right all fluid, fluid and, and, yeah. like, for me being coming out a guitar background you're thinking about chopping a guitar that backbeat when you're playing like a western right. swing or a not a western swing a 4-4 shuffle like a, does a your ray vice does your uh, banjo playing influence your steel this, playing this hand yeah I, in terms of little yeah, patterns well, he, yeah, absolutely. When he's what he's struggling with somewhat right now, I don't already play you banjo. You got it from guitar and banjo. I, yeah, I yeah. played banjo for three yeah. years already. I was already yeah. playing in bands, playing banjo. I was kind of like, yeah. I wouldn't say accomplished, but I knew enough where I could go out and play gig, playing banjo. So I sat down the steel yeah. to do, uh, I'll tune, to play a right. triplet. Roll, yeah. It was nothing. I just said, to do that, you know, yeah. where if you're not, Used to that mechanisms, so I had no yeah. problem with the right hand. I remember yeah. actually, I'd only been playing a year, and I bought a new steel guitar from a guy. He said, 
where'd you learn to play your yeah. right hand like yeah. that? And I said, I'm a banjo player. He goes, ah, oh. uh, yeah. Because if you start off with not having any right hand technique to start with from yeah. scratch, yeah. it's very weird. It's be like you, you sit down and because your right hand technique, you go, yeah. all this would yeah. be fluid Seems to me. you. Yeah. Because you're already using your fingers like that. Now, you know, starting from scratch, yeah. it's like, yeah. it's really tough. And that's, it's, it's a, it's a big, there's yeah. a big, Void there to use yeah. right hand t- technique down. Now, I didn't have that. You know, I, I was able to play all the play all those triplets and roll through it with no problem. Yeah, yeah. Just that obedience is there. The muscle memory was already. Yeah. You know, I just had to get used to this, the groups. It looks like the spacing between the strings is pretty much like a electric guitar. Kind of, uh, it depends it? on make and model. This guitar. Okay. I have another, my primary guitar I play all the time is a, called, made by a guy named Bruce Zumstead. It's a Zum Steel, and the strings are spacing is slightly farther apart. Okay. And uh, with a show, but it's slightly farther apart. Emmons are traditionally, the string spacing, string spacing is pretty close. And that's why I, I fumble a little bit, like that right there. I was playing my other guitar this morning, and the string spacing, Tough time with this. Getting across the strings because. Let's see if I'm over here. Seems like you got a lot of thumb finger, the back and forth thing, the grill. Well, I some players and I I tend to do this too. I use all three, but then there's certain guys that Buddy Charlton, you know, he was one of these players that used a lot of his f- fast picking was done with these two fingers. Yeah. And you know, Doug Jernigan used his whole hand. He uses his whole hand. Uh, Paul Franklin. Some people, you know, yeah, I'm playing the same lick using two fingers as. Fast stuff is, is from a posing motion, like an alternate picking type movement. Well, actually, you're not doing any alternate. Al- well, I mean, like, you know, you're using a finger and a thumb. Alternate, oh, yeah, yeah, like exactly. It's very seldom so that you'll play. Yeah, you won't play. Like a pick. You, I, I tend to do it sometimes to, out of a bad habit that I'll play right. two strings Double. with one finger when realistically you should, should go. Right, but it's like economy pick, and you do that in classical guitar too. You know, sweep but for me, I, 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 when I started out playing, I played a lot of lines with these two fingers. You can do it. I can't do it. On this guitar, I tend to do that because the string spacing. The further string spacing is, it's easier to use all three. So I can do it. I can do the same thing with these two fingers. Get the nuclear symbols. <laughs> your body when you're playing you're just it's all very easy yeah that's the whole trick the ergonomics of it and the way you settle in and be comfortable with it it's it's so awkward you're wanting to do this i know you know you want to do that but as you progress you'll get so your hands more relaxed because you can see how these fingers are coming under here 
the gig you're, I'm throwing you're, behind you're, just you're, for John. Just, you're, get, you're getting more used to it already, or used, you know. used to it, you know? See, your hands already looks more relaxed than yeah. when you started. You can tell. Let's we'll see your right hand from here. Just... Yeah, it's the same with the thumb. It's a classical guitar. You're trying to reach back, really. A big, big joint. Yeah. You don't want to do John this. Williams, yeah. Do not want to do yeah. this. Everything's coming from here. Yeah. It freaks people out that the thumb is the largest finger. Kind of. You always think of your thumb starting here, but that's the middle of your thumb. Yeah. It's like a big chicken wing. Bar, you're gonna go, wow, what a difference. Thank you.